Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for today's call with LNI Secretary Jerry Oleksiak and UC Benefits Policy Director Susan Dickinson. I'm Teresa Elliott, Deputy Communications Director for LNI. Please submit your questions by clicking the chat icon located in the lower right hand side of your screen. Please include your name and media outlet followed by your question. In the interest of time, you'll be limited to one question, but time permitting, we'll open up the call for a second round. You may submit any follow up questions to us at dlipress at pa.gov and we will address them after the call. For your awareness, this call is being recorded. So if you do not consent to being recorded, please hang up now. Following the call, a link to the recording will be provided to the media outlets that participated today. We'll get started with comments from Secretary Jerry Oleksiak. Secretary. Thank you, Teresa and Susan, and, and thanks uh, to all of you who are joining us on this media call. Let me start with the numbers as we do. Uh, since March 15th, we've paid almost $31 billion with a B in unemployment compensation benefits, about $6 billion from regular UC, the remainder from all of the uh, CARES Act programs, uh, pandemic unemployment assistance, the pandemic emergency unemployment compensation, uh, the lost wages assistance, which is after the CARES Act, and also Pennsylvania's extended benefits and the federal pandemic unemployment compensation. I'm sorry, the, Pens uh, the yes, the uh, federal unemployment uh, extension. So uh, $31 billion from all of the uh, programs available. Uh, since March 15th, we've also now, we're almost at 200% increase in our staff. We've nearly tripled the staff going from 775 employees to our current total of 2,286 employees. And those employees as of uh, uh, this weekend had uh, worked a total of 409,000 plus uh, overtime hours. So we're over 409,000 uh, total overtime hours. 97% uh, of eligible claimants who filed for regular unemployment compensation between March 15th and October 10th have either been paid or have been determined uh, to be not eligible. Uh, the remaining 3% are still pending resolution for a variety of reasons, and they are in various stages of, of that investigation. That, um, 97% uh, number has been consistent, but again, the weeks that are covered in that, uh, we're catching up and we're doing uh, a really good job in catching up. Uh, we also have been able, because of the overtime hours and the additional staff, since March 15th, we've helped more than 3.7 um, million. We've reached out 3.7 million times to claimants through uh, emails, through um, our chat line, through the virtual assistant, and through our phone calls. So uh, our, our numbers are getting better. Uh, they're still higher than we would like for the wait times, but um, uh, we're making the, we're moving in the right direction. We encourage claimants to try to reach us via phone when the uh, call volume is lower, typically Thursday and Friday. And uh, we are continuing to expand our capabilities to answer uh, claimants' questions. We expect to be able to answer uh, 8,000 calls daily and respond to 11,000 emails daily by the end of this calendar year. Uh, you know, we talk every week, this, this is, uh, we're really proud of that work, but uh, again, we, we know people still have difficulty getting through and we will not stop until we were able, we are able to get all the people who are, uh, deserve benefits, make sure they get their benefits. One of the things we've done recently uh, involves backdating. Uh, for those of you who were unable to join us for last week's call, or again, as a reminder for those of you that were, I'll quickly go over our expanded ability to backdate unemployment compensation claims from six weeks for up to 52 weeks. This will allow LNI staff to assist claimants who attempted to file UC claims during the first weeks of the pandemic, but were unable to reach a staff member for help due to the, the sudden and historic surge that we saw in claims. Um, we're expanding our back at uh, this uh, backdating ability will ensure that no eligible claimant will lose out on payments because of the hardships caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Claimants who are seeking to file a backdated claim should email uchelp at pa.gov with the subject line backdate request. 
include the exact date they were separated from their employer and any relevant information about the uh, separation for uh, the additional weeks they wish to claim. Uh, we ask uh, claimants to please just send one email request that will get their um, claim fixed as soon as possible and sending additional will just clog up our system. So please one email. Uh, we continue to pay out uh, funds through the lost wages assistance program for the five weeks that were uh, determined uh, August 1st through September 5th. Um, when that money is gone, it's gone. So people who uh, have not yet applied and may be eligible, please go to uc.pa.gov slash cert to uh, both uh, determine if they're eligible and to uh, file. Our uh, UC trust fund as of Friday, November 30th, our balance was uh, 167 million, just shy of 167 million, based on official updates provided by the U.S. Treasury. Um, we have borrowed thus far 618 million dollars in zero interest loans from the federal government to pay our benefits. We will be holding our uh, final uh, virtual town hall this Thursday. We've done 25 of those. This will be our 26th uh, town hall. We're ending it. Uh, because we are continuing to make progress in UC, and we've seen a steady drop in the number of claimants who are uh, participating in the town halls, we'll see where we are uh, after the holiday season, early in 2021, if we will begin those again or not. And again, to get uh, have access to those calls, access.live slash PA labor, or you can call 833-380-0719. Uh, our final update, um, our final update, I do have another one, I'm sorry. Uh, we will provide an update also on the, the fraud uh, and ID me programs that, that we are working um, with our uh, uh, vendor and with uh, obviously other agencies. Uh, Ellen and I contacted with ID me at the end of September to provide additional identity verification in an effort to combat the widespread fraud that has affected uh, the PUA program, not just in Pennsylvania, but all across the country. The IDME program has thus far been running very smoothly, has allowed us to get PUA payments into the hands of legitimate claimants more quickly. IDME is taking, making a small change to their process to help further uh, mitigate, put an end to these scams. Uh, the IDME verification process will now require claimants to provide a self-image, a selfie, to prove their identity. IDME is implementing this step, implementing this step in all the states where they provide identity verification services um, because they believe it will further filter out the bad guys seeking to start uh, seeking to steal from um, this federal program, uh, taking the money out of the hands of those who deserve it. Uh, this additional measure is necessary due to the prevalence of fraud in the federal PUA program. Uh, and these guys are clever, they're smart, we say this all the time, uh, and we um, need to stay one step ahead. And that's exactly what we're doing uh, through this uh, change, working with, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, working with IDME. Um, we ex anticipate this change will be in place by the end of the week. And uh, for more information on this, we encourage people to go to uc.pa.gov. One other thing we'll mention um, before we take questions, I mentioned this last week that um, LNI has and will continue to advocate for additional support for Pennsylvanians during this uh, difficult time that's been caused by the pandemic, particularly as we see numbers begin to rise. Uh, while Pennsylvania has recovered significantly from its unemployment peak, two key federal unemployment programs, the Pandemic Unemployment Assistance Program and the Pandemic Emergency Unemployment Compensation Program will be expiring next month unless the federal government acts to extend or replace them. That means that thousands of Pennsylvania families who rely on these programs would be devastated by the loss of these benefits and it will impact our entire economy. Uh, we don't know what future programs would look like, if any, but we are prepared to quickly and efficiently implement an extension of a new program that would provide Pennsylvania families the assistance they need. Um, we want to continue the economic growth that we're seeing, uh, even with the numbers rising and uh, that extra 
help from the federal government is vital. Uh, with that, Susan and I will now take your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for those comments, Secretary Alexiak. We're now entering the Q&A portion of today's call. So I encourage you, if you have questions at this time, to please submit them using the blue chat icon in the lower right-hand side of your screen. Please include your name, your media outlet, as well as your question. We're going to get started with an inquiry from Jackie Dale Torrey from WPMT Fox 43. I chatted with a group of people who are either still waiting for UC payments, PUA payments, or have been overpaid and say they still can't get through to speak with someone about the issues they're dealing with. As we get into the holiday season, claimants are not hopeful that they'll be getting through to anyone for the remainder of this year. A lot of these people were getting payments, but, and I'm sorry, I lost my place here. A lot of these people were getting payments, but have, mm, mm, Okay, okay, here we go. Sorry about that. A lot of these people were getting payments, but then they stopped and haven't been told why. What do you recommend these people do besides wait for an email back or sit on the phone for hours? Some of these people are fearful they won't be getting the money they need before the holidays and may not get an answer until 2021. Uh, I'm going to let Susan address the uh, the bulk of the, the question, but I, I can tell you that we will not stop because of the holiday. Uh, we uh, are making uh, steady progress. Our numbers uh, of backlog cases are going down. Our call time uh, wait times are getting better. Uh, we are uh, responding to emails more quickly. Uh, so we we still have a way to go. We know that. But again, this has been a historic surge. When we were getting a handle on this, the fraud epidemic hit, and that has put a significant a significant. I can't overstate it. Um, it's, not, it's really impacted the system significantly. And uh, for us to uh, uh, clear up all that backlog, it's going to take some time working with uh, agencies to stop the fraud and working with IDME to verify legitimate claimants. Susan, you want to add? Um, sure. I'll just add a note about uh, the various ways to contact us. It's been getting better for months now. So as the secretary mentioned in his opening remarks, we have tripled the staff that we had when this started. Um, and on top of that, fewer inquiries coming in. So we're able to make a big dent in all of the pending inquiries we've been having over the past few months. Right now, our oldest email is from October. So it's, it's really not that old. If someone has a message uh, or an inquiry and they want to know something, email actually is a very good way to get a hold of us. Uh, that way, they're not having to sit on the phone trying to redial several times, um, and they're not having to try to get into chat several times. Um, I will remind everyone that chat now begins with a chat bot named Paula. So Paula, when someone tries to chat with us, Paula will try to answer the questions in a general type of sense. So if someone needs help with their specific claim, um, then what will happen is, is if Paula cannot answer the question, she will eventually transfer you to a real person. But of course, you have to do that during the hours that a real person is manning the chat. So that's Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. until 6 p.m. So chat is a, a viable way to get through. It's actually uh, having the chat butt up front has taken a lot of uh, pressure off the regular staff to answer those general type of questions. And they're able to then spend more time with individuals who need something very specific. Um, uh, the phones also uh, call volume, you know, has decreased over time. And uh, it is always better to try to call later in the day and later in the week. Um, you know, Mondays are always a, a bad time to call just because everyone, a lot of people have tried filing on Sunday and may have had an issue. So they try call mo Monday to straighten it out. So, uh, you know, Thursdays, Fridays are the best times to try to get a hold of us via telephone. Um, and, you know, otherwise, if, if you send an email, you know, right now, uh, our, our oldest, keep in mind, that's not average response time. That is our absolute oldest email. Um, you know, we've mentioned this before in the past. Usually there might be a more complicated one or something that sits there. And then that's our, our oldest email till we can take care of it. That's only as old as October. So, uh, you know, to, to get a response from us is much faster than it was several months ago now that we've caught up on a lot of our messages. Next, we have Pittsburgh Tribune Review's Joe Nabshaw. 
how much in lost wages assistance has LNI distributed and how much money remains? Yeah, I thought, Susan, we can get that uh, for you. Yep, um, it's over $1.7 billion in lost wages assistance that we've paid so far. Um, yeah. And how much remains? We we were given 2.8 billion, um, so it's a little little over a billion that we have left to distribute if if warranted. Of course, uh, individuals must be otherwise eligible for those specific weeks in order to receive an LWA payment. Next, we have Bill Kibler from the Altoona Mirror. How many people do you think would be eligible due to the extended backdating? Um, well, for backdating, uh, there's two types of requests that we expect to receive. Uh, we expect to possibly hear from individuals yet who have not filed a claim. Uh, they may have been trying to get a hold of us only on the phone uh, for months. And if they don't have Internet access, those are the individuals who most likely haven't even opened a regular claim first. Uh, everyone else, they may have opened a regular claim online but they're looking for weeks in the past uh, because when you open a claim online, the claim can only be effective the week that you're opening it. So those individuals are probably ones who will send us an email and request the backdating to the time that they were first unemployed. Uh, so we don't have an estimate of how many people that may be. Uh, there's really no, no sense of, of how many people maybe still be looking for benefits if they didn't receive them at first or those who may be looking to get more weeks than they are currently entitled to um, if they look back to when their last date was. Thanks, Susan. Next, we have Peter Hall from the Allentown Morning Call. And he says, a reader tells us that their Relia card was frozen and they have not had access to their pool funds since October 16th. They have called Relia card repeatedly and used the ID verification website four times. The first thing the first time they were told their documents were not le uh, legible. They sent them a fourth time on November 5th and have not received a response. What can this person do? Well, we have been working with uh, Treasury and RELAC, uh, Treasury, who they are the ones who uh, have uh, the contract with RELIA card. I, uh, Susan, uh, maybe you have some information that can help. Yeah, it uh, from the general um, explanation, I'm assuming that the identity verification issue is on Relia Card's end, in which case, you know, the department doesn't control that portion of it. If there is some sort of identity verification on our end, uh, you know, we send them through ID.me, but we also have individuals who may not have online access and staff can take care of their identity verification just by having them, you know, send them copies of their uh, identification documents. So it sounds like this is probably on Relia Card's end, um, in which case, you know, we we don't have control over that. Uh, we can always advocate on behalf of someone trying to get benefits released, but of course, ultimately, it depends on Relia Card taking the action they need to to release the payment. It looks like we're now entering our second round of questions, and I encourage any of the reporters on the line that have additional questions to please submit them at this time. Next, Ashley Bishop from WPXI asks, where did a fraud investigation stand? And can you please provide an update on PUA? Have you gotten any closer to closing in on the fraudsters? And some states have released more information on the investigations. We're wondering where things stand here. Well, this is an ongoing criminal investigation. So we have been uh, very careful about whatever information we release. We're following the guidelines from our uh, uh, legal office from the agencies that we work with uh, in uh, sharing information. Uh, I can tell you that we are making progress, particularly with IDME, in uh, sorting through which claims are fraudulent and which claims are not. Uh, we still have a, uh, some uh, work left ahead of us. One of the difficulties in this, and, and Susan, you can jump in at any time as well, please. Um, I mentioned every week we've talked about this. These people are pretty smart. They're pretty clever. Uh, they are, uh, for every uh, step that we take, they seem to have a countermeasure. And that's why we are uh, continuing uh, to fight it. That's why we're uh, working with IDME and add, adding this extra step of, uh, of the selfie. So um, it, it, to give you exact numbers is difficult because we are, uh, again, working through it and our, our applications seem to have leveled off for, for PUA. 
uh, and the phone calls we're getting on the pool line seem to have leveled off. So I think we're making some progress in, in slowing it down. Uh, have we stopped it yet? No, we have not. Susan? Um, I'd, I'd agree with that. And of course, this is still a nationwide problem. Uh, we work with other states as much as possible um, so that we can all compare notes and see if there's things that we should be doing that that help, uh, you know, deter some of the fraud. And other states have learned things from us. And, you know, it's, it's a great exchange that we have with them to try to, you know, get a handle around this fraud. You know, in the unemployment world, we've never seen fraud this high, you know, this much. Um, so it is something fairly new, but, you know, we're we're learning as we go. As the secretary mentioned, it seems like every time we take an action, there's a counteraction. So, uh, you know, we're we're still listening to the U.S. Department of Labor. We're still listening to our counterparts, um, you know, our, our advocates with the U.S. Department of Labor. And we're all working together to try to prevent this from taking off uh, even more than it has. Next, Bill Kibler from the Allentown, the Altoona Mirror ask, can you say how the IDME verifications have been lacking such that they need selfies to be provided? I, I wouldn't say that they've been lacking. I think uh, this is just an additional step uh, because, of, as we just said, the uh, the bad guys are, are uh, right there with us trying to, to match this. And uh, um, we agree that this is, is necessary. Um, will it delay things? Possibly. Um, but we, we, as I've said before, we have a fiduciary responsibility to protect these payments, uh, to protect these dollars, and to get the payments in the hands of people who need them. We aren't happy about this either. This is frustrating for us. Um, this is clearly not our doing. We weren't responsible for the breaches, or we weren't, you know, we aren't, uh, we aren't out there uh, trying to scam the system. We are the ones fighting it, and it's particularly uh, frustrating when we. Uh, as I've said before, when we start to turn the corner and then new uh, schemes show up. So uh, we're um, very happy that we're working with IDME and these other agencies. It is making a difference, uh, but we still have a way to go. Jackie DeTore from Fox 43 has a follow-up and she wants to know, with the city of Philadelphia announcing new restrictions and rising COVID case counts, how is the department preparing for the possibility of another influx of unemployment claims as we head into the next few weeks? And what are your concerns? Well, our, our concerns are what uh, the concerns that everyone has that uh, this this could have an impact on unemployment. It could we could see numbers go up. It's very difficult to predict. Uh, we have made a lot of changes. As I mentioned, we've almost tripled our staff. We've uh, brought in outside vendors. We've improved our call times. We've improved our email response. Uh, we've hired a lot of folks. So we, uh, I, I'm not going to predict. Uh, I think uh, you know the, we'll see if there uh, any further mitigation efforts. What impact that might have. Um, uh, we we are ready. We are certainly more ready than we were when this happened because nobody knew, nobody saw this coming. So we are ready to do what we need to do if numbers do go up. Thank you, Secretary Alexi, Alexiak. And that's all the time we have for today. Please email our communications office at dlipress at pa.gov with additional questions. Thank you so much for joining us today and stay well. Thank you all. Thank you.